Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Hans, and uh, I work on the Angular team uh, at Google, and mostly on, uh, I'm the lead for the Angular CLI. Um, and when I started uh, on the team, really, I started at Material because I wanted to build, uh, to help people build great apps. And so I started on the Material project with Jeremy Elborn and uh, the other folks there, and it was really great. Uh, but then I kind of realized that there was another problem that Material was not solving, which is really what happens before you can even use Material. And uh, so I joined the, Material, the, the CLI team, and then I, become, I became the lead of the, of the project. And um, really, it, it's mostly because when you start out a new project, it's really hard to keep track of all the configurations and all the boilerplates and all the, the different tools uh, that you have. And really, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that complex. It should be simple, or at least simpler. And that's why, that's why we really created the team. That's why we created the Angular CLI, um, because it was a good idea. And we built it, and we built this tool so that it works. It just works. And that's really important for you guys, and that's, that's what matters for us. You shouldn't have to you know, configure anything or think too hard about it. It should just work. You don't, ne you don't need to tell it what to do. And really, um, in, inside Google, but in general, it's, it's kind of a... Um, it's, it's, it's a small tool, but it dreams big. Uh, somebody came to me earlier this week, uh, Bunny came to me earlier this week, and uh, she told me, basically, this thing doesn't work. The CLI is smart, and it makes me look smart. It allows me to do, in a few minutes, what could take me hours to do. And this is, this is a general sentiment among a lot of people that talk to us. It's, um, it's like, oh my god, I was losing hours, weeks, over like nights, entire nights, working on Webpack configs. And now with the CLI, we take care of everything for you. We take care of this all for you. It's, it's, it's the whole idea of the CLI is that you should not have to worry about these things. And um, really, it's a small tool, but it has a lot of big ambitions. It dreams big. It, it looks at a large project or small projects. It wants to fit the bill. It wants to fit your need. Um, and I'm sure so, most of you have seen talks already about where, how to use the CLI, really. So this talk is not going to be about how to use it. This talk is going to be about something else. Because we're all engineers, and uh, we're, we all want to know, we're all curious about what is going on under the hood. What, is, what happens once I you know, let it do its magic? Well, today we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you about, like we're going to open the hood, and we're going to look at what's going on inside of it. And we're going to take a look most closely at the build system. Um, so the build system in Angular CLI, the first thing that it does is parse your flags and figure out if you want to run in developer mode, development mode, or um, production, in a production environment. And if it's in development mode, what it does next is it's going to run static analysis on your project to discover your lazy routes. And it's going to keep a track of your lazy routes for you, wherever they are. They can be in your project, or they can be in your dependencies, in your NPM, node modules, dependencies, and libraries. And once, once it's figured that out, it keeps it in memory, and then it runs TypeScript compiler to compile down uh, the TypeScript to the JavaScript. It performs a little bit more step. It refactors a little bit of your apps. We're going to talk about this later. And once that's done, it passes the JavaScript and the lazy routes down to Webpack so that Webpack can do the bundling. And at the end, the code is ready to ship to your browser. Now, 
Um, this is what happens in development mode. The only difference between development mode and production mode happens in the refactoring, and also that we do ahead of time compilation with your code. We generate uh, your factories, your, we generate your factories from your templates, and I'll put that as well before detecting lazy routing in TypeScript and running the TypeScript compiler. And these parts happen entirely in what we call, what we developed, what we call the ng-tools webpack plugin. Uh, this is the plugin, this is the heart, this is the core of the CLI. This is what builds your code and what takes care of it for you. And we made that uh, plugin available for all of you. If you want to use it without the CLI, you can. Uh, but most people come to me and ask me, okay, what does the lazy route works? Because that's a really source of headaches. And they also ask me, what kind of refactoring are you talking about when you say that you do some refactoring before running TypeScript? Um, so we're going to go into more details into these two, uh, these two little boxes over there. Uh, the first part is detecting the lazy routes. So what happened there is that imagine that you have this ng module, which is relatively simple. What the CLI will look for using the same static analysis than uh, the uh, Angular compiler uses to understand your code and your metadata. And so it goes into this and looks for the router, uh, the router module and everything that provides routes, basically. And then inside of that, it takes the load children and uh, keep that one in memory. It resolves the string route2.module hashtag module2. Uh, it resolves it to an actual class and verify that everything is in place and that everything is all right. And it takes your normal dependencies, your regular dependencies, and then create two bundles with them. Your dependencies are going to be in the first bundle because they're directly related to my module and they cannot be loaded otherwise. But the second dependency, what we do with the load children is that we take it and we create what Webpack calls a context module dependency. And so we tell Webpack, we might need this, but probably not, or maybe later. And so you can place it in a separate bundle. And so we create a one.bundle.js that contains that module and maybe everything that's static inside of it. And if you use the CLI to create Multiple, uh, multiple lazy routes, you'll notice that you get like a zero bundle, a one bundle, a two bundle, et cetera, et cetera. These are all lazy, ro uh, lazy routes that we told Webpack could be separated into separate files. And so your zero will be smaller because we removed the stuff that it doesn't need to run. Um, the second part that uh, the Webpack uh, plugin does is running refactoring on your code. So this is a little bit magical, but basically we have a refactoring um, internal library that we use that let us modify your code before passing it to the browser. And so one example that we do is, uh, let's take a look at this uh, component for now. So it contains a template URL, two styles, and a, uh, an injected service. Really simple. So in development mode, in, uh, in, J in JIT compilation, basically, what we do is we take the template URL and the style URLs, um, and looking at the tree, uh, at your actual code, at the actual TypeScript representation of your code, we uh, change them to be using require calls so that Webpack can understand them and include them in your bundle. So um, we change them to be as if they were in line. And because we use require that Webpack understands, and we use uh, SAS uh, extensions, and we have a SAS loader in the CLI, the, the, the two styles that are there that are actually SCSS uh, will be compiled down to CSS before being included in your file directly. Now, that was for JIT. AOT is a little bit different story. In AOT, in production mode, 
uh, what we do is that since we don't need, since we generate the ng factories with your, uh, from your templates and your styles and your metadata, we don't need the decorator anymore. Um, so we get rid of it. And the other thing that we do is, because there is no more decorators on it, there is no, there is no reflect metadata. So for the dependency injection, what we do is create a CTOR parameter, static property right there, that contains uh, the information that Angular will need for dependency injection. Um, this, is, uh, this is needed to, to basically, um, with this, you don't need reflect metadata, uh, the reflect metadata polyfill, sorry. Um, and because there is no metadata, everything that's referenced in the metadata can actually be removed from the end bundle and will not be included in your code at all. Um, so everything in there uh, can be tree shaken properly by, uh, by Webpack. Uh, the other thing that we do is your bootstrapping code. So if you coded, if you used Angular, uh, you, you probably know about this code. This is really simple. It bootstrap Angular within, uh, with an app module. And it import the app module from app. And if you notice, this is for JIT. This is JIT specific code. So it has platform browser dynamic. Um, and it uses the app module instead of the app module ng factory. So what the, uh, what the plugin does, the Webpack plugin, what it does is actually use um, the, re the refactoring tools that we created to change the same code before passing it to type of compilation without you having to do anything about it. It, it uses the same code and refactor it into bootstrapping the proper ng factory so that Angular knows that you're in AOT. And so there is nothing, uh, there is nothing from JIT that remains. And this is done entirely for free. So what we do is get rid of uh, the platform browser dynamic and replace it with the platform browser, add the ng factory to your import, and bootstrap the module factory instead. Um, so the, um, the other thing uh, is ng eject, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is a little bit, uh, it's ng eject. And we created eject because there are cases where the CLI just doesn't fit the bill. And at, at that point, you still want to use, you still want to keep your, your configuration, your build, but you want to manage it yourself. The CLI doesn't fit your need at that point, and you, you've outgrown it, which you know, can happen. And we still love people who eject, by the way. Um, so when you run ng eject, it runs exactly what we just saw, uh, the old bit about creating the configuration and creating the, uh, the Webpack plugin configuration and creates a webpack.config.js. And it, uh, it, it, pa it parses, like I said, it parses the build uh, arguments. So what that does is you can pass, what, what that means is that you can pass any argument that you would pass to ng-build and it will create the config for that. So if you want to take a look under the hood too, you can always git commit to make sure that everything is in shape. And then, I don't know, you want to ng-eject with AOT on. Or maybe you want to use prod eject with a local to generate an internationalization build. And ng eject will generate the proper webpack config that handles this case. And you can also uh, ng inject multiple times too, if you need. And um, please eject responsibly. <laughs> this, is, this is not a joke. <laughs> um, so I just want to say like two weeks ago, we released uh, CLI 1.0.0 uh, final. All right, um, Mike, please, please, please sit down. Uh, so CLI 1.0.0, it's a, this, this is a big milestone, but you know, every journey starts with the first step, right? Well, that was 0.0.1, but you know, at 1.0, we, we, 
we finalized our quest of getting the milestone and we leveled up. Um, but the truth is, this is just the beginning. There is so much more to do and so much more to come. For example, in one point, uh, we're going to have a 1.1 version at some point. We're not just going to fix stuff. We're going to improve it for, you, for all of you. And we're going to keep the mantra that it just works. This is really something I want to stress out because you guys should not have to worry how it works. But you can be curious. It should work for you, whatever you try to do. One of the first things that we're going to focus on uh, 1.x, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, I, I can promise 1.3, but uh, is working on the size. So in our internal test, we've been able to reduce the size of your bundles with more aggressive tree shaking and more aggressive algorithms by 20%. Um, we can't promise anything for your apps, of course, but this is a good metric, and every single advantage there will come directly to you without you having to do anything. Another thing that we want to do is, um, right now, development mode using JIT takes you know, a small amount of time to build and rebuild, and AOT is really, really slower. Um, so we want to get that into like more of a manageable size so that you guys can run AOT even in development mode all the time. We want to get to the point where you guys might notice a difference but will not mind about the difference between the two so that you can run your, your development in AOT and reduce the number of bugs when you actually release it to the public. And um, the last thing that we want to work on is error messaging. Um, there is a lot of errors that could be uh, better, shown better to the user with actionable messages and um, direct, direct message on what you need to do to solve these errors. And right now, we don't do as well as we could. So we're going to improve on that as well. And there might be a CLI 2.0. Actually, Stephen kind of uh, said, so there's um, so, <laughs> Stephen kind of mentioned it this morning um, that it's going to be more like the words on SDK, um, where we're going to support like plugins that you guys, that uh, your guys and your friends and your moms can actually develop for the CLI, and we're going to support libraries. Uh, it's going to no, it's going to be a set of libraries that can be reused by other tools like IDEs or even other CLIs, um, and. It's going to allow you to have like custom templates, custom build systems. If you don't like what we use, you, can, you could replace it. Uh, custom test frameworks, if you don't like what we use. For example, we want to give you more options and let you uh, pick and match what you want to do, what you actually want to do. And we want to keep it the same small interface. Really, the, we need you to understand that if you use a CLI today, CLI 2.0 will feel familiar if you keep using the CLI, but it's going to integrate better with everything else that you use, and that's really the important part. So we want to keep the same small tool, the same small interface, but dream even bigger. We want to go beyond what we can do right now and work it up from there. Um, a, little, a, big a big thanks to all the team. Um, all the contributors to yeah. I just want to say this is 12 um, there is like I don't know hundreds of people who, com who contributed by creating issues by creating PRs uh, by just talking to us on Gitter on Stack Overflow etc cetera, etc cetera. all of you I've been doing really great. We wouldn't be here without you personally. And so I want to also thank all, all of you, all our users. And just remember, the best cure for JavaScript fatigue is to have an app. <laughs>